Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17 beta 7 to developers. iOS 17 public beta 5 should be out within a day or so, or it could be out by the time you're watching this video. Now, if you want to jump to any specific point in the video where we talk about features and skip all of the things such as build numbers and more, be sure to check out the chapters in the description. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 17 Beta 7, WatchOS 10 Beta 7, along with macOS 14 Beta 6, tvOS 17 Beta 7, and HomePodOS 17 Beta 7. We also had some older releases with macOS 13.6 RC1 and macOS 12.7 RC1 as well. Now this update came in a little smaller than last week's update at 664.9 megabytes. That's on my 14 pro max. And this update does bring a few little changes and updates. Now let's first take a look at the build number. We'll go to settings, then we'll go to general and about, and you'll see the build number is 21 a five, three, one, nine, a this particular build finally has an a at the end, which means we're very close to a final release. Maybe we'll see one more release before the final, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. As far as a modem update, we do have a modem update in here as well. And you'll see we're up to 2.08.02 on this update. So we do have a modem update, which should help with overall connectivity, maybe fix additional bugs. Apple never really tells us what it does specifically. Now, as far as the first new features that has to do with phone, Apple has updated this again. So if we go into our phone and last week, they moved the end button to the middle where it was on the side. However, this was changed with the keypad and now they've moved it back to the middle. So they had it over to the side with the keypad as well. Now it's been moved back. Some of my favorite features on iOS 17 have to do with AirPods, specifically AirPods Pro 2. So if you're using AirPods Pro 2 with some of their new features, specifically conversational awareness, maybe you're listening to music. I'll just turn it down here. We're listening to music. And then we actually have that enabled. You can see that in settings under your AirPods and then scroll down. If you have conversational awareness enabled and you're using both AirPods, when you start speaking or someone else is speaking to you, it actually pulls the volume down of your song or whatever you're listening to and then lets you speak. As soon as you stop speaking, it brings that volume back up. This time around, it actually gives you a message in your ear when you do that the first time. So it's sort of like a splash screen, but it says, just so you know, AirPods Pro lowered volume and switched listening modes because you started speaking speaking. You can turn off conversational awareness in control center. So if we go in control center and we have that enabled, let's go ahead and I'll place both in my ear here and give it a try. So we have both in my ear. We're listening to songs, press and hold. We have conversational awareness. We can disable that here or turn it back on. It's a nice little update that just lets us know that the feature is there within shortcuts. If we go to create a new shortcut and then add an action, if we search for recently played that has now replaced a previous one that said suggested. So now it says recently played instead, if we go into messages and then press and hold on the plus button, it jumps directly into our photo picker. This was updated with beta six. And one thing I noticed is the animation is a little smoother here. So if we press the plus button, it sort of extends the text message box and then goes right into our photo picker. So that's a nice little change or just a smoother transition into that mode. Also, one thing they've fixed in this update has to do with haptics. Last time with beta six, when you switch the silent switch, there was no haptic feedback. This has been resolved in beta seven and it's been brought back. So that also hints that we could have an action button in the future. We've seen that again in code of beta seven. We saw that before and now we're seeing that again. So it looks like we're going to have an action button replace this. And just by changing the code, they actually disabled that by accident with beta six, but it's back with beta seven. With the Apple wallet update, Apple has actually made it so that Apple cash is showing in some unsupported countries. This happened in previous betas, but it's still there, but people are not able to activate it. This is happening in Greece and Hungary specifically, maybe some other European countries, but when going into Apple wallet, there's now the cash option. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is last week with beta six, I had someone tell me that their voicemail completely disappeared with beta seven. It's been replaced with a new message that says visual voicemail is currently unavailable. Call voicemail. And then it says network provider voicemail, and then you can call them. So maybe they've just added this error message in case you get this, and then you can call your carrier and have it re-enabled.
Now there's also some wording changes within account recovery, some small changes there. And within sign in and security, you have account recovery. This has been updated with some new wording, just giving you clarification as to what it does if you lose your account recovery pass key. So that's something that's been updated and you can create a new one and it can also delete your encrypted data as well. As far as splash screens, I haven't seen any new ones there, but let me know if you're seeing any of them. And as far as the feedback app goes, people are having trouble with it right now, getting into the feedback app or even seeing the latest notes. However, Apple does post this on their website on a public website. I'll link it in the description below so you can see this even if you're not a developer but I went through this and there's 12 categories of known issues. That's up from 10 in beta six, but that's a good thing is there's catching more bugs and there's more to fix, but there's also still 79 new categories of resolved issues. Apple is fixing a lot of bugs and you can tell just using this over the past hour or so. We'll talk about that in a moment, but lots of things have been fixed. There's known issues with iCloud backups, but lots of resolved issues such as voicemail notification sound will play even when the device is set to silent mode. They've fixed that in this update. Again, there's known issues with lockdown mode, but resolved issues with mail where mail is unable to fetch new email from IMAP servers in the namespace extension. So that's something that they've resolved lots of things that they've fixed. So it's great to see that. Now, some people are also having some bugs with this though. So they have resolved a lot of bugs, but there's still some remaining and the notification bug is definitely still there. You can see here, as I just went into my notifications, it didn't show properly. And then if I scroll down, scroll back up, sometimes it jumps in, sometimes it doesn't, it's still something they need to fix. Some people have said it's worse in this beta and it just sort of jumps around. So hopefully they fix that in future betas, but it's not key to the overall usability of iOS 17 or iOS 16, where it still was there before. So that's something they still need to fix. As far as other bugs, well, there is one that's going on right now. If you go into settings, then general software update, this goes along with the feedback app issue. Some people are not able to see your beta updates here. They're showing up, then they're disappearing, then they're coming back. So hopefully it's something that they resolve very soon. This is probably just on their server side where it's a little bit buggy. Now, as far as overall performance, I've noticed this is incredibly fast right now and smooth. I noticed that right away with that animation with messages, also just going into things, scrolling with promotion or just going back and forth into apps, maybe going into music. And you'll see that was actually sort of stuttery, but for the most part, I haven't really seen that. So if we press play, then swipe home, it seems to be nice and smooth and fast. Everything seems to be fast this time around. And surprisingly, the device is fairly cool to the touch. I noticed that with beta six, it's even better this time around. And I'll show you that with the benchmarks as well. It's barely warm to the touch. I think Apple's really optimizing the overall performance, memory usage, and more. As far as storage, many people have asked me to check that. And you may have noticed that the beta updates were back and then they disappeared. But if we go into iPhone storage, it loads almost instantly for me. If we scroll to the bottom, we've got system data using about a gig and iOS 17 is using about almost 11 gigabytes. So that's the overall system, the operating system, system data can vary. It's just cache storage. So that could go way up or way down, but then it will settle based on how much storage you have available for it to use. So it seems to be doing pretty well as far as that goes. When it comes to overall battery life, let's go into battery. We'll go back and battery health and charging. I'm at 89% still. And if we take a look at the last 10 days, it hasn't been great for me. It's better than beta six or beta five was rather beta six was better. Hopefully beta seven is much better, but I had three hours and 19 minutes of screen active time yesterday and two hours and 48 minutes of screen idle time today, though, I've used about 50% of my battery and used two hours and 17 minutes of screen active time and two hours and 38 minutes of screen idle time. So maybe we're getting an extra hour or two at this point. Again, I'll have to use it for a few days and see. And of course I'll do a follow up on the weekend where we talk about any new features we find battery life and more. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta seven, well, if you're on beta six, then absolutely. If you're not on the public betas yet, I would wait for that with iOS 17 public beta five, try out the public beta. Once it comes out, it seems to be pretty stable at this point. So you could try it out, but make sure you have a backup and just be aware that you can't go back to iOS 16.6 .6 without a computer. So as long as you're aware of that, I have some different videos on how to do that, but as long as you're aware of that, then you could go ahead and try it out. Otherwise, if you're worried about bugs and battery life and more, I would wait for the final release. Now, as far as betas are concerned, we could see beta eight next week on the 29th. Usually we have seven or eight betas, but given that the build number is an A at the end, 
This might be the last one if they find it to be stable enough, then we would have a release candidate. Now, given that we think the Apple event will be on the 12th, if that's the case, and then we have a release on the 18th, we could see one more beta and then a release candidate with a final release on the 18th for the public version. We don't know that for sure until Apple actually announces it, but that seems pretty likely. It's possible it's before anyone thinks, but at this point it seems very likely we'd have it on the 18th. As far as any future iOS 16 updates, well, we did have Mac OS 13.6 RC release today, and that's for beta testers. So we could see iOS 16.7 RC maybe this week or next week. We don't really know, but typically Apple will release that usually in early September and then a final release before the next major update version comes out, such as iOS 17. So I would expect that probably within a week or two at this point. As far as overall benchmarks, they're pretty good this time around. Let's take a look. We'll go into Geekbench 6 and let's take a look at last week's as well. So last week with beta six on the left and beta seven on the right, we had 2,613 for single core. This week we have 2,641. It's also increased a little bit on multi-core. Last week we had 6,350. This week we have 6,398. So it's doing a little bit better. It is performing better. It feels much faster and smoother. And overall just seems to be a great update so far, but it's only been a couple hours. So we'll have to give it a few days. And again, I'll have that follow up on the weekend. So that's everything so far with iOS 17 beta seven. If I find any additional features, of course, I'll have them on the weekend where we talk about battery life, performance and everything else after we've used it for a few days. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper though, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.